Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. Tonight, the sorry tale of our national public housing crisis. Live to reporter Dan Nolan with this comprehensive report card. Dan? Tracy, we get a lot of viewer feedback when it comes to our public housing system. Many people feel that it's used and abused by bad tenants who don't need it or deserve it. But ask anyone living in it and they'll tell you it's far from an easy ride. So we've undertaken our biggest ever national report card, visiting every state to find out what's wrong with it, what's right with it, and how we can make it better. The state of public housing is disgraceful. Put up, shut up, or move out. We're trying to change the social housing for life mentality. Tonight, Australia's public housing system in the spotlight. In our report card yet, you'll see where your taxpayer dollars are going. State by state, the waiting lists. I've been waiting for a house, this is my 24th year. The tough new rules turfing out rat bags. I don't understand how they can live like feral animals in their home. The prime real estate now on the chopping block and the luxury developments coming their way. We actually need this system to work in the interests of both the tenants and the taxpayers. Plus the secret plans uncovering more sell-offs. If it's not nailed down in Victoria, it's for sale. If you want public housing in Australia, say a prayer you're not looking down there. This is southwestern Sydney, where suburb after suburb has a minimum 10-year wait. There's 27,000 people waiting for housing in this one little pocket. But they're not alone. Too long, they're waiting too long. Yeah. When Kerry Clark first applied for public housing, Bob Hawke was still Prime Minister. When I call the department, they give me a standard answer that there's lots of people on the waiting list and you'll just have to wait like everybody else. But no one has been waiting quite as long as Kerry. All up, 24 frustrating years. I'm finding it very hard, it makes me anxious and um, depressed. It's um, very hard to be on this long. She was 33 when she first applied. Her husband had just died, leaving her a widow with two young girls. Now she's 57 and undergoing chemotherapy for bowel cancer so couldn't move house even if they found one. All I'm hoping for now is some assistance with my rent and I'm not even getting any help with that. It's a lack of competence, there's money being wasted. I mean, I often tell the Ron Honig represents the stuff. inner city electorate of Redfern Waterloo. You're in the highest density of public housing anywhere in Australia. This is high density public housing that's gone very, very wrong. Drug use is rife as are assaults along with brutal public murders. But good luck if you want to get out of here. There's another long waiting list just for a transfer. Well, people are being assaulted going to their mailboxes. They're desperate to get out of here. Seven years, one person's been on the waiting list and he's too scared to go outside his house. So you haven't even got 10 year waiting lists to get into public housing. You've got 10 year waiting lists to even get out of it. The official waiting list figures we always hear are per household. Tonight, we've calculated those into actual people. In New South Wales, it equates to 128,000 people and climbing, the worst in the country. Victoria comes in next with 77,000 people. In a moment, we'll show you how Victoria is trying to reduce its figure with brand new luxury developments opening up in the inner city. In South Australia, 47,000 people are waiting. A shocking figure for the smallest state on our report card. We need to have a good look at public housing and how it works. It used to work great. It really did. And it can again. Julie McDonald is from SA's Housing Trust Tenants Association. She says too many people battling drug addiction or mental illness are being dumped in public housing instead of the supported rehab accommodation they need. The people that desperately need housing, like single mums, pensioners and the disabled, and battlers, 
are missing out on public housing and going into the private rental market where they're struggling to pay their bills. In Western Australia, there's 43,000 people waiting for a home. But the clear winner on our national report card is Queensland. 67,000 people were waiting two years ago. It's now dropped by a third to 42,000. So what's Queensland doing right? You're watching the toughest eviction policy in the country. Police, government officers and a locksmith move in on the worst and most violent ratbag tenants. If you can't respect the house that you've been given, if you can't respect the neighbours, uh, you have no future in social housing in Queensland. Queensland Housing Minister Tim Mander is the architect of Australia's strongest eviction laws. Three strikes and you're out, but for the worst of the worst, it's one strike and you're gone. Since the policy was introduced nine months ago, there's been 1,000 first strikes, just under 200 second strikes, only 34 third strikes and 73 first and final strikes. The effectiveness of this program won't be measured by how many people we evict, it'll be measured by how many people's behaviour we can modify. This is an example of what qualifies for a first and final strike. A complete and utter mess, even a backyard drug lab. There's cars, there's blocks of wood, there's um, washing machines, uh, wheelbarrow. Western Australia has a three strikes policy too, trying to stamp out this. All right, guys, guys, that way. A public housing drug lab explodes in the Perth suburb of Southlake. While across town in Camillo, this tenant has been raided eight times in the one year. There wasn't a drug lab here. No, there's no cooking or nothing going on here last night. I didn't even know my tyres were going off my car. This is the desperate phone call Irene Kiva's made minutes after being attacked by her ratbag neighbours in Redcliffe. Punched in the left arm, punched in the chest and I got punched in the right arm. She says the three strikes policy is a joke and wants to leave WA for good. It's not worth the paper it's written on because nothing happens. You have to actually end up in hospital assaulted. They actually have to physically assault you for them to get a strike. It's gotta be really bad before they give a strike to anyone. The three strikes legislation unfairly targets Aboriginal people in Western Australia. Shadow Housing Minister Francis Logan says WA's tough approach has led to increased homelessness. And the critical issue for Perth is public housing investment and that's what the government hasn't done. Victoria takes a three strikes approach too, but they need to happen within a 12 month period. While in South Australia it's three strikes substantiated by police or authorities before you face eviction. New South Wales is by far the most lenient, but it's all but impossible to give bad tenants the boot. Well, there's a convoluted tenancy tribunal process that means that even when people are criminals and even when people are drug suppliers, it takes too long to get them out. How frustrating is it for those good guys when the troublemakers aren't evicted? Well, it's extremely frustrating for them and they're, and they're frightened. They're living in fear. This is one of Sydney's toughest suburbs, but local MP Ron Honing says it's filled with great public housing tenants. Hi, Evelyn. How are you? Nice to see you. Very Ill health good. forced 74-year-old Evelyn Morris to ask for a government-provided home, and she's as house-proud as any Australian. Why wouldn't you take care of it? You want things comfortable, you want things nice, you look after your home. There is a lot that don't, and I don't understand how they can live like feral animals. She thinks a three strikes policy here would help build respect. I don't believe it's a right, it's a privilege. And when you've got that privilege, respect it and look after your place. 
Somebody else could be using this house with children. Thank you. 83 year old Brisbane couple Terry and Adele treated their government home like a castle for 48 years. Yeah. Welcome to your new home. Thank you. Now they're moving into a palace. Someone remarked the other day they'd probably be rather like living in a hotel. The new one and two bedroom developments are popping up all over Brisbane as well as a new $2 million complex on the Gold Coast. That's where the, the Housing Minister are. Tim Mander. The whole idea is to get people out of homes which are heavily under-occupied with spare bedrooms and put them in a smaller accommodation. Luxury properties are going up around the country. This is a brand new building in inner city Adelaide. Uninterrupted city views, it's a mix of publicly and privately owned modern apartments more new complexes further north in Elizabeth, while in Perth a new tower is being constructed at Coburn. In Melbourne you'll find some of the most expensive Housing Commission property of all. The view is excellent view if you look in the city. Joseph Lenger lives in the trendy inner city suburb of Fitzroy, trading up from this to this but at a price. Cost me nearly $200 a month more for this high rise. We have uh, seen the secret plans of this government uh, to in fact sell off very precious public housing, housing land not a couple of kilometres away from here. Richard Wynne is Victoria's shadow housing minister. He says all these new developments were built with federal money even though the state government has been caught selling off prime social housing real estate. These documents show a parcel of land in Richmond is now up for grabs. We've got a beautiful parcel of land in Richmond which is worth many millions of dollars which was always slated uh, for a public housing development and this government has but now been discovered trying to sell it off. The government denies this but the opposition says Victorian housing stocks are dropping for the first time in history. We have evidence that people are being washed off the list, that they've simply given up. People are now sleeping rough, they're sleeping in the parks. It's the same in New South Wales. Well, for too long, the public housing system in New South Wales has been put in the too hard basket. Gabrielle Upton is the new minister tasked with fixing this broken system. With the longest waits and the greatest demand anywhere in Australia, this state government has decided sell-offs are the solution. Already being sold, properties with these spectacular harbour views. The next to go, the most famous housing commission block in Australia. So by selling off some of our property, uh, we're able to put the proceeds of that back into the system. But there's been no funding increases as yet. Even basic maintenance is a struggle as that waiting list heads towards 130,000 people. Giving New South Wales an F on the national report card. Victoria, South Australia and Western Australia all get a pass mark. The clear winner is Queensland. One strike for bad tenants and reducing their waiting list by a third gives them an A minus. But it's not just about evicting people, it's about helping people modify their behaviour and we're being very, very effective in doing that. And we did invite housing ministers from all states to have their say, but several declined. If you have a story to tell about public housing, please send us an email.